Riddle takes the carom. Crawford would have been better served there, Wayne, to come to a two-foot jump stop and go up with both hands rather than trying the difficult shot. Talton rims out. Criddle can't follow. He was pushed at a foul. They've got Ola on his first personal foul. That's just a breakdown by the freshman Ola. You have to find Criddle. This is a guy, you mentioned it, very well-traveled. Very big body down low for UIC. You must find him and put a body on him because Criddle comes in averaging about six rebounds per ball game, almost two offensive rebounds per outing. The foul was called on Reggie Hearn on the push, not Ola, who is also there. And Criddle making good on his first. He's a senior out of Bellwood, Illinois. And he makes good on the second. He was thinking about transferring to DePaul until he talked with Howard Moore. Howard talked him out of it and had him come over to circle and play there. And he's been a great addition for UIC in the early going this season. Flames basketball, they're just one for five from the floor here in the first five minutes of the game. Swapshot's done a nice job of closing out on Humes anytime he's caught it out on the perimeter. Time winding down to the shot clock, down to five. I don't know if the big fella knows. Down to three, and he raises with the right hand and rims it in. I <laughs> mean, just beat the clock. Josh Criddle had a well measured. Excellent offensive patience by Josh Criddle. Let the traffic clear. Recognized he had the smaller defender swap shot on him. Backed him down. Didn't panic. Good delivery by the senior. Good job of getting the defender on his back. Backed him all the way underneath the rim. Savvy play. UIC can't give up that kind of easy post position to Ola. Criddle back into the ball game for UIC. They double down on him briefly, and now Criddle turns baseline up and under Ooh. Ola. What a beautiful move. Great footwork by Josh Criddle. Wonderful up and under. Got the defender up in the air again, Wayne, showing his experience. Didn't panic with the double team in the scrape from Marcatulio. This is Brown. Jake Wiegand in the ball game, and here comes Criddle on the drive, and he's got it. Boy, Criddle has been very impressive. If you're Northwestern, you have to hop that right hand, Wayne. You have to take away that rhythm dribble going to his right or strong hand and make him come back to the left. Eight points for Criddle in the game. UIC back to within one. Time winding down to this first half of play. Now you have a bonus situation. Attack. Abrahamson had it blocked. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by UIC. Will belong to Northwestern. Barnes, Talton, and Brown. The backcourt trio. Humes and Criddle up front. Criddle to the nice pulse. Humes is well done. Boy, that was a, you're exactly right. He put that ball right where he had to. Humes had an easy two. Threw it away from the defense. That's a tough pass from Criddle. Excellent job. That's who Hearn is guarding right now. Brown picked up by Abrahamson. Barnes on the cut. Boy, they drag Hearns through a couple yeah. of screens. <laughs> well, he ran into a door, not just a screen. Yeah, and Criddle. Yeah, that's true. Criddle going baseline. Tough shot. Ola, solid defense. Criddle gets it back. Scored and a foul. Criddle showing some great strength. And Northwestern falling asleep, Wayne. That ball is on the floor, okay? You have to give up your body and dig that thing out. You don't allow a post player. Watch here on the opening salvo. The ball's on the floor. You've got a bunch of guys reaching for it. That's fine if you're 46, not 19. Get on the deck and dig that thing out because Criddle's not going to miss twice. Foul on Abrahamson. Meanwhile, Criddle completes a three-point play. He has 11 points of the game. Nearing the halfway mark of this second half, Hearn from distance. And the rebound taken by Criddle, but a foul over the back. It looked to be Turner. That would be his second. And Hearn, 53% from three-point range on the year. You can live with that shot if it had probed UIC a little bit more deeply defensively. You can get that shot just about any time. Good ball reversal by UIC. Miller off the baseline. Nicely done. Joey Miller's first field goal of the game. I'm really impressed with Criddle. Not only his job yeah. down on the block, but how about that pass? That skip pass over the top. Put it right in the position where Miller could do something with it. And the shot they cleared the transfer from Eastern. Nice feel and vision by Criddle. Taken by Humes on the deflection. I'm not sure what Marcatulio is doing right there, Wayne. If you catch it that 
deep going toward the rim. You have to put it up there and give yourself a chance at a basket. Brown inside, scored and a foul. And right in the middle of it, getting his touch was Josh Trittle. Here's Brown. Slashing into the lane, put up a wild shot. Criddle goes for it, makes the catch, has a shot blocked. On the save attempt, Hume comes away with it. Talton. He's got Barnes on the wing. Now Barnes comes over to set a screen. They reverse. Oh, good look to the back door. That was Criddle to Brown for two. Well done. Nice job by UIC of playing through Criddle. He has made just about every right decision once he has touched the ball on the post. Here's Talton for UIC. We're still tied at 44. Barnes gets the step in the lane. Good ball movement. Talton penetrating. Leaves for Barnes. Lefty three. Short. And the rebound. Criddle inside. He converts. Can't happen if you're Northwestern. You have to find a, a body and put it on Criddle. They've been losing the battle on the offensive board the entire game at the Wildcats. Now they're down two. Under a minute to go. Parker, the sophomore from Harvey. Now Josh Criddle, the two-time transfer, back to Parker. Now it's Daniel Barnes inside to Criddle against Eagle. And Criddle will draw the foul. Strong not, take to the hole. Not the foul that Gino Ford wants. He doesn't want Egoff in trouble inside. He did a real nice job trying to be physical, but when you allow the pass to come in, he's got to do a better job. Get half man around, ball above the free throw line, you play high side. Below the free throw line, you play low side. Try and dissuade the opportunity to get the ball in there, keep you out of the foul situation. Josh Criddle, a 70% free throw shooter, unable to hit the first. Gino Ford calls out the plays to his Bradley Braves. Criddle, an amazing story. First year at UIC, transferred from Central Florida last year and granted immediate eligibility. He started his college career at the University of Oregon. So this is the third stop on the long and winding journey of Josh Criddle. Talton into the corner for Mark Brown. will work it around the perimeter. They don't shoot early in the clock very often. Criddle. Oh, oh, oh. See the thing that set that all up though, Jordan, was they took it side to side. You've got now Mark Brown trying to get Criddle to go underneath. They'll feed it to him. And he dunks it. And he finishes inside, really well done. Doesn't mean because you're open that you gotta pull up with 20 seconds to go. Run the offense and trust the offense. Jake Wiegand, a foot on the line, but able to hit the long jumper. Fans are like, oh, the coach isn't getting us baskets. <laughs> no, players make shots, players make plays and baskets. Coaches diagram plays they think will make them successful. That play gave him an opportunity, they made the shot. Big block by Criddle, and now he gets it inside, and Weekend on the post. And a whistle, and a foul against Bradley. Now Tyshawn Pickett posting up on Humes. Sims Edwards over him. No good, Prosser can't get it to go. And Josh Criddle the rebound. Round finding Criddle, the cross court feed, and Barnes for three. And that one too strong, but Brown able to get the rebound. And a foul coming up against the Bradley Braves. The senior from Dallas, Texas. Inside to Criddle. And Criddle swatted away by Prosser, but a foul coming up against Jordan. Gets physical down on the low post. Criddle not a big scorer, but he's a big, strong kid down there. There's the spin. There's no doubt about the foul. No doubt. And now Josh Criddle to the free throw line. Criddle with just five points 
in this game so far. The average is just over 10, third on the team. It's Lemon, so you assume when he short arms the ball and he misses, he must have got hit. He got a whistle. The Lemon rules? The Lemon rules, exactly. Now Criddle to spin around, Crosser and scores. And the foul. Big basket, big, big, big. Bump it to 10, can get it to 11 if you make a free throw. Bradley's in a world of hurts right Was second on my ballot. I like Jordan Fowles, and I think he can be a big time player if he really wants it. Well, you and I would concur on that as Criddle scores inside. Josh Criddle at 6'9, 260 pounds. James is aforementioned out of Chicago. We were trying to body up a Criddle. That's a pretty good matchup over That's there. That's two big dudes. Look at this. That is last two possessions. Criddle, beautiful. Gold star. Been able to play through any foul difficulties in the latter part of the season, which has been helpful to Green Bay's success away from home. Criddle hop to the goal. He is fouled before he scores the basket. It's like Mays might have got popped in the mouth. Yeah, he, Criddle is so physical when he rolls to the basket. It's really hard to defend him because he's all over the place, not trying to hit you, but he's just that physical player. Makes it really tough to guard him. And with that pop, Mays gets a chance to get refreshed and maybe gets whatever blood might be pouring out right now. Yeah, he got popped, and it's... Criddle's not trying to do that. He's just that. He's an aggressive play. These two games earlier in the season, the regular season games, one was tied at the half, the other one separated by just two points, and we have a five point separation here. A nice soft touch. I mean, is, uh, in your opinion, Criddle going to be playing somewhere next year? I mean, he's got a chance to go over to Europe and play somewhere and make some money. He's not a big scorer, and the European teams always want their American players to be scorers. But he's a physical presence, and he does give them something that they don't have. Talton, Criddle, good cut to the basket. What Criddle just exploded and ripped down a rim. Byron Wardle, after the game against Valparaiso, said he thought his team played too tight. And as a result, seemed to have loosened up a bit the other night against Milwaukee. And here this evening as well. But this game has tightened up. Inside Brown, trying to muscle inside against Criddle. Puts it up, no, traveling. And the Flames are getting a chance to tie the game. See, that's where Criddle is so helpful. Alec Brown had no chance at moving him. When he's rooted into his position, not going to move that big fella. Flames once down by 10. Chance to tie Criddle inside, scores! Primo move. That's how he plays. One dribble, make a decision, make a move. It's a game from a deficit in the second half to win and win convincingly. Alec Brown has now picked up his second personal foul. Brian Wardle wanted. He was very frustrated on the sideline. Talking to his coaching staff about that very fact. Criddle out of the double team to Humes, who has been electric. Back to Criddle. Against Brown. Missed it. Green Bay back ahead. 61 59. Under two minutes left. Criddle against Kugel, backing him down. That's Criddle's game. He's a horse down low. Very tough to stop. The second straight year, Humes has worked with them for the last 20-some games of last year. Same with Brown, and then Criddle's uh, been instant kind of, uh, you know, respect coming in from Central Florida. As he tries a 50 oh, oh, Real nice job. Take the ball and flash it right to the free throw line. 
nobody steps up, gets a hand up, he gets a good clean look and he buries it really good. And it is 10-1 on the glass here. We haven't played six minutes. Lions though trying to get within two now. It's Griddle. Base is up on Iverson and his jumper is good. Nice touch for the big man as he tries to get involved early in this one. Well, he's smaller. He's outmanned height-wise. You've got a really elite rebounder shot blocker guarding him. Step back and see if he can force him to guard him. Didn't even come out here to the uh, area to get a shoot around in and uh, they're leaving right after the game tonight. So they didn't even get a chance to really take in the sights in Chicago. Here's oh. Iverson going to the basket and his ball knocked away. It might have been Criddle who came away with it. Didn't hustle quick enough back out, gave an open look for a three, and that's what got knocked down. Riddle, cross court pass they go, and now Brown for a three try. That's no good. You just play. And the athleticism takes over, and the Flames have some pretty good athletes on this team. 23 all, one of the first ties of this game. As Riddle turns around and nails it. He's had a nice mid-range jumper going today. And he gives the Flames another lead. That's the second time we've seen Criddle, though, have Colton Iverson right there, and he steps back, gets enough daylight, and knocks down the baseline jump shot. Six for him tonight. Miller, left corner. Three try. Barnes that time won't go. Criddle, though, with a big board trying to clear his way out. Gets it to Miller. He couldn't get his feet set underneath him, so he'll bring it, bring it back out. And a fresh 35 for UIC, and now won't kick that a bounce by Everson. 27 now in the shot clock. But they really would like to see a couple of other guys step up so that they don't wear these guys down as the season goes on. But you know what? They're 19, 20 year old young men. They can handle it. Here's a pass underneath. Criddle has it, and he got hammered by a couple of Ramsey. And he'll go to the line and shoot a couple. You know what I like what Criddle did there? Rather than, he knew the bodies are around him, rather than try and see if he could go up and complete it, maybe you don't get the foul call, you get a shot block. He held his spot right there, head and shoulder fake, to take the hit. Head and shoulder fake is one of the great weapons of the game, and too many guys don't utilize it. Criddle with a free throw is good. Josh with only seven points, he's averaging 10.5 a game and about a dozen a game here at Pavilion, and that one rattled out no good. So it's a four-point Flames lead. Now Desimant kicks it into Smith. Smith, double team, scribbles it out to the corner. Now throws it to the far corner to hit the, tie, the boundary line right there, the boundary line and it, at the baseline and goes out of bounds. Humes will get it in. And Joey Miller trying to get open. He's tackled a couple of times. They finally do get into Taunton. Taunton pressured near the timeline to give it up to Daniel Barnes. Underneath the criddle, lays it up and he gets fouled. And the Flames are going to come away with a win here on the pavilion floor as Josh Criddle knocks it down. He'll go to the line and try to put the big cherry on top of this one for UIC. This outstanding job to break pressure. Talton, turn it up. I told you they were going to go for a steal first, not foul. There's the pass inside. Don't put it on the deck. Go right up, take the hit, hoop, harm, and this one looks like it's going in UIC's column. They were running that drill yesterday during practice at the Flames Athletic Center. This drill knocks the free throw down. Al Biakalano would call out and say, all right.